Hey everyone, checking in on Canadian MJ Names. We'll do the US MJ video at some point tomorrow. Thanks for showing up with all the likes, 800% increase in those likes, and definitely said that tongue in cheek with some sarcasm and an empty threat because clearly at this point, if I'm doing a video every day in Iceland and every day in Puerto Rico, I enjoy doing these videos and I'm not gonna stop because there's not enough likes. But some people didn't get that, so got a lot of angry people out there rallying for reporting my videos as spam because I'm holding content hostage for likes. Kind of reminds me like when I was talking about Pink Floyd and with a straight face I said that they were the band from the 70s that had a one hit wonder. And I got a lot of angry messages for that. So we're gonna disregard all of that. I appreciate the likes and the shares and the comments and the interaction and all that fun stuff. We're gonna look at 13 names here. The big five, tier two, three. Tier two, three, that's what we're gonna call them. Hexo, TRST, OGI. VFF with a huge day today, T-God, Fire, E-M-H, and N. So we'll start it off with CGC. We got a gap up open, a bullish response to earnings, which is a great sign. It lifted everybody higher pre-market. We had some nice pre-market action to be looking at, but what we're looking at is the potential of an equilibrium because we did see profit taking from an initial quick surge up the first five minutes of trading. Everybody that had that FOMO got it out of the way and made bad entries, unfortunately. But we ended up backfilling and filling the gap down to 4704 because gap ups are not for buying, gap ups are for selling. So if this is our lower high on the daily time frame, we're going to look to pull back and form a higher low compared to 4168. And we're going to look for a bit of an equilibrium and tightening range. The hourly uptrend is what we're going to be watching to determine if we are going to pull back on the daily. And this base of support 4722, 4728 set today. If we lose that level on Tuesday morning, we have no trading Monday in the US nor Canada. But if we lose that level on Tuesday morning, we're going to be looking for a daily higher low to form in perhaps the $44 range in the 44s. So it's going to be key on Tuesday to see whether the low of the day holds or not, because that's the next key level. If 4651 breaks, then we know, yes, we are clearly consolidating after a daily lower high has been established. Cron also is still in a tightening daily range, unable to break its resistance of 2205. We do still have support down here at 1872. So it's the similar kind of setup that we just had on WEED, where we're going to be looking at if we are unable to break resistance on Tuesday, and if we come down and break some support levels on the hourly time frame, there's not a whole lot of very clear hourly support nearby. I'm looking at 2117 and then the low of the day. 2085. If we start to take out those supports on Tuesday, we will say our daily lower high has been established and we'll look to pull back and form a higher low compared to 1872 and to give us a tightening range. That would be the ideal scenario for me. I love tight trading ranges as a trader. It makes things nice and easy as VFF will show us here in just a bit. And we are looking at breaks of those tight ranges to be the clear signal that the most people act on. That's why they get the most follow through. So I'd love to see a tightening daily equilibrium into later next week. But Tuesday is going to let us know how likely that scenario is. ACB continues to stand out as one of the weaker major names because it's still digesting those earnings and still struggling to do so a little bit here. Range the last two days, pretty much the same. Double top, $7.29 and a double bottom at $7.00. Close week, if we break $7, we're looking at 666 and then 655. And as far as resistance goes, we have that clear double top to be watching, 728 and 729. That's the range with the support much closer to a bear break than we are to a bull break of that resistance. APHA had their commission rebuttal come out this morning. And I was not planning on trading this morning. And in the end, I did end up taking multiple trades and actually need to go look back at CGC in just a second. First trade I took today was APHA pre-market. And that's again, thanks to Fidelity being really fast with their news alerts because that news came out. I even had time to post it in the chat room before I made any entry and then go and get my shares at 950 and sell them minutes later, 969, 970 range. So we did have a gap up open here as well. And the gap to fill is at 928. We dropped down to 933. So there's still a little gap here on the daily time frame to be aware of. But what we had play out today was consolidation. Hourly support down at 933. If we cannot break 991, it's just an hourly lower high. And if we were to pull back and lose 933 support after that, 
then we will just look for a daily higher low to form compared to 890. A little bit of a different setup here on APHA because we did change the daily trend. We have a little higher low and a higher high. That tells us that our weekly higher low has likely been established. That's a nice weekly candlestick that just formed and the momentum shift is underway. Whereas it's a bit of a different setup because CGC and Cron have not shifted their daily momentum, but they also didn't pull back as big of a percentage as APHA did. So it's almost like APHA is catching up to those other names. And let's see, just in terms of percentages, in order to see continuation, we would need to see about a 14% move. And if we're just looking at CGC and Cron from where we stand right now, in order to see continuation, about an 8% move. So still a lot closer to breaking resistance for these major names. But we did see that shift in momentum on APHA daily chart, which is notable. Trade I took on CGC today, just want to highlight it as it was using the five minute tight pattern here, this equilibrium setup with our low of 47.22, high of 47.90, higher low of 47.41. So at this point, I had just come back from a hike, which you'll see at the end of the video here. And I saw a tight setup. I said, all right, this is setting up for an equilibrium. And it looks like we just formed our five minute higher low. I'm talking about these candlesticks right here. And I said, all right, I'm making an entry into CGC. And rather than waiting for the equilibrium to break, I'm gonna make an entry and then just put a stop loss below that level. And what I was risking was the gains that I made on APHA that morning. So if I stopped out on this trade for CGC, I'm break even on the day and I wasn't planning on trading anywhere anyway, so I don't care. So my entry ended up being 47.63. I put my stop at 47.39. So I was risking about 24 cents. And then I just uh, didn't really monitor it too much. I checked in every half hour or so. And we did get the bull break with no follow through. That was a bit of a red flag. We consolidated. I considered exiting break even here, but I said, nah, I'm gonna let this ride out. So then we got the move up from there. I put my stop loss at 47.49, just walking it up with the five minute higher lows. And then I was gone from my computer when the breakout happened. I certainly would have took profit on that bull move had I been sitting there because that would have been more than a day maker in itself. And I would have locked that in, but ended up exiting on this break of support, losing the five minute higher low. Because by the time I got back to my computer, it was right about here. We had established that support. And I said, all right, if that support breaks, it gives us a five minute lower high and lower low. I'll be back to all cash. I'll lock in that position and that will be that. It'll be a, a half a day maker at that point. So I did get stopped out, but that was my reasoning for that trade. TLRY got a higher open with the gap up open, but no follow through. So the range was really tight and that higher open couldn't do anything to force shorts to cover or to incite bulls to buy. So we're still in a tightening range. $75 is a base of support and we have an hourly equilibrium to be watching. So we've got the high of the day, low of the pullback, lower high, and the bulls are trying to form a higher low compared to 75.80 at the end of the day here. We don't have enough bounce off that level for us to say confidently that that is our higher low. If, if Tuesday morning the bulls show up and make their way back to 77, then we will say, yes, our hourly higher low has been established. But right now we're watching this hourly equilibrium because if it breaks bull, we're gonna see a clear bull break of this tight four-day range that we've been in. And if it breaks bear, we're gonna look to test $75 support, the recent low. Right now the bears have favor because of the weak close and the profit-taking scene today but it's all about that hourly equilibrium to be watching on Tuesday. H-E-X-O on the daily time frame. Also trying for this continuation, we have a brief little higher low at 7.08, and we have to see a bull break of 7.44 to see continuation. So that's the attempt to change the daily trend from clear consolidation to heading back up. And if we look at the weekly time frame, just like APHA, that's a bull flag right now. Very healthy consolidation. And we'll see if the bulls are able to break 47.44 or make that 7.44 to give more confidence that we are following through from that weekly higher low. After 7.44 is 7.87 and 7.94. And the most important support again is now 7.08. That's our low volume, higher low that was established. And now we're trying to see that higher high with a bit of a double top to be watching. TRST already got the little higher low and higher high. So the, now the key daily support here is 1016. Nice follow through with the break of 1064. And we are now looking at the next resistance level on the weekly time frame. Limited resistance in this area. So we consolidated. We got continuation very quickly. And we're really looking up at 1245 as the next weekly level. So we'll look at psychological resistances 11 and 12 from here and just it's the scenario where we lost the little daily higher low and actually not even really going to say that at this point. 
Not gonna say that. I was gonna, it was gonna look like we lost this little higher low and then pulled back, but this was all the same consolidation. And what I just used to gauge that is the fact that every candlestick here was a lower high. So what I gauge to see lower highs and then lower lows is the bulls attempting a clear bounce, getting rejected, and then breaking support. But at this point, we didn't really have any clear bounce attempt. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high every day. We had a little bit of a higher open with no follow through. That wasn't much of a bounce attempt. And then we had the gap down open that the bulls saw significant buying of. So I would call the daily higher lows 932, which is going to show up on the weekly time frame, And the new higher low is 1016. So hold 1016, daily bulls are in full control. And as long as the weekly bulls hold 932, they are in full control. OGI also working on its daily higher low. So we had the high, the pullback, establishing our support level, lower high, very quickly form that higher low. And here we are heading to that resistance level. 767 clear resistance, bulls really wanna break that first thing Tuesday to have us looking at 782, 8 and 815 to try and get continuation weekly inside bar tightening range forming and that daily chart needs to break that resistance very similar to hexo hexo's got the double top ogi not exactly a double top but pretty much the same setup trying to confirm the daily trend change for those both names vff congrats to these bulls this was a beautiful pattern to watch play out very uh likely or i should say very good job of this pattern continuing to follow the most likely scenario day after day so we had the double top we had the higher low, we had the inability to break resistance. And then right here yesterday, we said this, if this is the only pullback that we get to 883, that definitely favors the bulls. Very brief consolidation, almost a little bull flag there. If it was going to stay in this tightening pattern, we would have pulled back, like I said, down to the 850s. And obviously that didn't happen today. We had bullish news, uplisting news. So huge volume spike, blue sky breakout. I traded VFF, well, VFFIF, the US ticker for the first time today. So Nice to finally join you all in your bull party. And I actually missed the original breakout. Like I said, I was hiking today, but I came back. I saw everything that had played out and our chat room was doing a great job of staying on top of this. And shout out to posting the news early with Mr. F and a bunch of people, you know, following through and staying on top of it. A lot of people were playing VFF in our chat room today. And I believe this is the consolidation I entered on. I got to see it on the US ticker. So this is the consolidation that I entered entered on. Just looking for the five minute bull flag. I saw the bull volume. I saw the bear volume. I said, all right, I'm going to enter a position. If we continue to pull back, I will enter another position at 750. So I got my position and I'm playing with a way smaller position because it's on the OTC. It's illiquid. You place an order, a market order. It takes a lot longer to fill than the NYSE or the NASDAQ. So the position that I have right now is 15% of my normal day trade position on a liquid name like CGC. So just be aware that position size should reflect the higher risk, higher reward scenario for this setup. So enter that. Once we saw consolidation, I knew I was sitting pretty in terms of being comfortable in the profit. We lost the five minute uptrend here. But as we know, when we lose the five minute uptrend with no follow through from the bears, we zoom out and look for a flag. And it was a bull flag on the 15 minute and hourly time frame and beautiful continuation into the end of the day. And we could see very early on, You know, I established this game plan at noon to swing trade and it was bullish news, blue sky breakout, huge volume. You have those three things, you can anticipate a strong close and a gap up open. So at that point, I have the most likely scenario, a strong close and a gap up open is the most likely scenario. And I'm looking for clues to tell me that's not the case because everything else is telling me that is the case. But I want to know, you know, what red flag should I be looking for? And I didn't see any all day. So I just comfortably held that position. And I like that it's a smaller position because I'm able to hold it a lot longer than I would be, you know, I have trouble holding my full CGC positions all day when the dollar volume is a lot more significant in terms of, I should say the dollar profit and loss levels are a lot more significant. So I'm swinging VFF. I'm anticipating a gap up open on Tuesday and I will look to take profit Tuesday morning from this position. Congrats to the bulls. This is a beautiful tightening pattern leading to a huge volume bull break. And we're certainly going to be looking for more in the short term hourly support. Let's see what was established today. And let's go back to the Canadian ticker. US ticker, it is 788. And Canadian ticker, that hourly higher low is 1044. Anything above 1044 keeps the hourly higher low intact for those bulls. And congrats, T-God. Following through, 
Doji after a bull move generally favors the bears. So I want to look in there and say, have we lost the hourly uptrend at this point? And we haven't. We're just trading sideways. A clear double low of consolidation of 375. So I can say that if we lose 375 support, we're going to look to pull back and form a daily higher low. And we know the odds are likely to form that higher low because this bounce was so significant and it broke resistance. The next clear resistance is going to be up at 390. But what the bulls want to see now is a bull flag of maybe a day or two of consolidation and then continuation. And that would pretty much be, I mean, you could call it so many different things. You could call it an inverse head and shoulders. You could call it a cup and handle pattern where, you know, ideal scenario, we get that bull flag. That means we have resistance, consolidation, inability to break resistance, little bit of a bull flag in the handle, and then a breakout over 390 to head back to the recent high of 432. So consolidation can be a good thing, especially when you see significant runs in the short term like we have here. Let's see if that's how it ends up playing out. And if we hold that level that we highlighted on the hourly, we'll look at 385 and 390 to be tested on Tuesday. Fire is still struggling here. Daily inside bar, 182, and then 177 are supports, and resistance is 188 and 191. So we have to see the hourly trend change very clearly for the bulls to change that daily momentum And at this point, we don't really have a clear hourly higher low and higher high on a penny stock like this. You know, every move is one penny and every penny move is a new level essentially. So you don't get those clear trend changes on names that are more liquid and have more movement than just, you know, a penny being a significant tick. So I'm looking at support of 185. If that breaks, I'm looking down at 182. As far as resistance, it's 188 and 191. And we have to see this daily inside bar break bullish. And we have to see the bulls make their way up over, really it's 197 for me. Get over 197 and the daily lower highs will break because what I'm looking at right now, I'll draw it out here. In terms of how this consolidation has played out is our pullback, lower high, lower low, lower high on a bounce attempt, lower low. So anything under 197, I just consider a lower high. So that's the key resistance that the bulls want to get over to establish the weekly higher low being set. EMH still consolidating on the daily time frame. Again, we zoom out to the weekly after losing the uptrend. Still a higher low pattern. 270 was the previous higher low. Now we're looking at the bulls hoping that 320 is that new weekly higher low, but we need to change the daily trend. Last daily bounce is 398. Anything under 398 is a lower high. So again, every candlestick is a lower high day after day. So I don't see any bounce attempt. I'm not saying any daily lower high has been set in here because we didn't get a bounce attempt and then a rejection, which would give us a new lower high. So on this bounce, if we can see a break of 343 and 345 on Tuesday, we'll then see this bounce and we're going to look for a lower high compared to 398 to be set. And in order to change this daily trend to make the bulls confident that the weekly higher low has been established is we need to bounce, top out, hold 320, and then change the daily trend, which is again, a bit of a glimpse into what we're seeing Hexo and OGI try and pull off. They broke resistances, higher low, and trying for the higher high confirmation. And on the daily time frame, shifting momentum a bit, we had a low and we did get a higher low at 98. So let's look at it on the shorter term time frames. And now we're shifting momentum. So again, I don't like the hourly here because every penny, it makes the chart just look a little bit choppy. But we held 98. I would say a key break of resistance was here at 104. So we're shifting the hourly momentum, and now we're looking at the potential of a four-hour equilibrium. Actually, I don't like the four-hour equilibrium setup. What I'm looking at is 107, which broke. Well, it could be a four-hour equilibrium here with our low of 90, our high of 123, our higher low at 98, and we're going to look for a lower high compared to 123 and for this range to continue to tighten up break this four hour equilibrium that I'm anticipating is likely to form. If it does form and we break it bullish, then we'll say, all right, our weekly higher low has been established and the bulls are going to try and recover here. So that's where we stand in the Canadian MJ sector heading for the US tomorrow. Certainly a lot of interesting names to be covering there as well. And I hope you all had a great week. We'll continue to check in CGC and Cron. Hope those daily ranges continue to tighten into the end of next week. That would be nice. VFF swing position. Other than that, I am all cash in the Canadian MJ sector. I am still holding my conversion shares for IAN. We'll cover that in the US ticker. Hope you have a great Friday night. Have fun out there.